Hey y'all, welcome back to Trey Living Abroad. Today is an amazing, beautiful, sunny Tuesday morning. And as you can see in the title, I'm gonna be telling y'all five reasons why I love living in Mexico. But not only that, I'm gonna take you guys to Mirador de la Cruz, which is a high lookout point uh, here in Vallarta. And you can see the entire bay and basically the entire city. And I am gonna tell you five reasons why I love living in Mexico up there. But before we do that, um, ha breakfast. I got some scrambled eggs. I got my salmon, you know, my little lemon. Listen, I swear I thought I was doing something, okay? And then I got my fruits right here. I love fruits. I'm an addict. Yes, I'm going to eat all of this and that's my business and I can do that because I'm growing. So, and I also got my orange juice. So, yeah, you know, I got to have enough energy to get up there because it's like 320 steps if I remember correctly. I counted it once, but I can't remember the exact number. But yeah, I'm going to need my energy and I'm about to eat all of this. So let me enjoy my breakfast first and then we're going to get started with the video. And actually, we're going to ride my bike today. I don't feel like taking the bus or walking. We're going to ride the bike so y'all can get a different viewpoint of the city. Okay? Y'all, that breakfast so was home? exactly what I needed. It hit the spot. But as mentioned, um, I'm going to be riding my bike today. Estrella, which means star in Spanish. Actually, it's right here. Uh, yeah, because it's really stunning, so I don't know if you guys can see it clearly, but this is Estrella. Um, I think I may get a new bike, um, very soon. I think for Christmas. I think that's going to be my Christmas present to myself, a new bike. Um, it has served me well. It's still serving me well, but yeah, I definitely, it's time to get a new bike. But yeah, we're going to ride my bike so you guys can get a different perspective of the city, and you guys can actually see, like, the streets and everything. So I'm excited, and let's go. It's hot. It's like 88 degrees right now, but the good news is at the top of the Mirador, there's always a nice breeze because, you know, we're at a higher altitude, so there's a lot of breeze, and it feels really good, so it's worth it. All right, let's get started. Hola. How are you? Bien, ¿no me vas a quejar tú? ¿Dónde vas? A la Mirador de la Cruz. ¿Sabes? No, no sé. ¿No, no sabes? Nunca he ido. ¿No? El Mirador, ahí arriba. ¿No? Tienes que hacerlo, güey. Yo vivo en Iztapa. No importa, puedes hacerlo. Sí. Maybe later, digo el cabello. Ok, va. So I just left my bike on the Malecon and now we have to walk a few streets back and then a few blocks up to get to the beginning of it. And then we're going to make our way up. But first I need to get some water. I got my water and now we're about to start heading up so we can begin. Y'all can see I'm already sweating. We have to walk up here, and then once we get up there, we're gonna be at the bottom of the stairs, and then we have to walk to the top. So I'm gonna record some of it. I'm not gonna record all of it because y'all gonna hear. 
<laughs> but it's all right because we're gonna get out there regardless, all right? So let's go. Okay, so this is the bottom of the stairs and then we're gonna have to walk up there. Once I get closer, I'll show you guys the full view because this tree's kind of in the way. So I told you guys, y'all were gonna hear a lot of and I was in line, right? So we're gonna go up here. Some of the trees are blocking, but it's even higher than that. So I think it's like 300 stairs or something like that we gotta go up. So that's what we're about to do right now. All right, as promised, we're getting higher. Still not there, still got a little way to go, but we're getting up there. I'm already starting to feel a little breeze. That don't look like it, <laughs> but I'm feeling a little bit. Let's go. All right, we made it almost at the top. So we made it at the, basically, we finished the hard part. Now, we're going up there to get a higher view. Now, the cool thing about this is you have two sides. This side is the ocean view, as you can see, or the view of the bay. And then we have another side over here that I'm gonna show y'all. It's the mountain side. All right, <laughs> I'm out of breath. I'm sorry, I'm breathing hard, y'all. But y'all will be all right. So this is the mountain view. Very nice. The breeze feels really good up here too. Satellite tower. And then the other side, you can see the city. The other side is going to be the ocean view. And then La Cruz, which means the cross. So as y'all already know, I'm a beach boy, obviously, but for the sake of this video, I wanted to give you guys a little taste of the mountains because, you know, we have everything to offer here, but don't get it twisted. Y'all know the beach is never far from me, <laughs> so I'm getting the best of both worlds right now. So you guys are going to be looking at the mountains and I'm going to be looking at the beach. So I just wanted to give you guys something a little different today. All right, let me get situated and then we are going to get started. Reason number one why I love living here in Mexico is the pace of life. It is just much, much slower. Now, I just want y'all to keep in mind that I am speaking specifically about my town in Mexico, which is Puerto Vallarta. It's located on the West Coast and it's a small beach slash resort town, but it's still authentic. You know, so I don't like to compare it to Cancun because it's just very touristy over there. Um, but here in Puerto Vallarta, it is touristy, but you kind of get the best of both worlds. So you do have your tourist sector. Oh, the wind's picking up. So if my phone's moving, that's because the wind. Um, yeah, like I was saying, you do have your tourist sector, but you also have the authentic or traditional, you know, Mexican part as well. If you just go like a few blocks back, you'll definitely get authentic Mexico. Um, so I like that. It's like the perfect blend. And, you know, it combines nature with like modern life. You just get everything here. But most of all, the pace of life. It's just slower. I don't have to rush. You know, I can literally, like I said, everyone's late here anyways. But it's literally like island time or you know just like your typical beach town it's just so relaxed and there there aren't many worries you know they're just you just have fun you know and you are always figuring out new ways to have fun whether it's at the beach whether it's in the mountains you know atv all of that you just can do it all but the pace of life is just slow it's relaxing and it kind of hypnotizes you i'm definitely hypnotized um you know you just kind of get into this mindset and most people see it as lazy but it's not lazy um it's hard to describe it's something you have to like experience but 
it's like this mindset that I don't have to rush. Everything is all right. You know, um, what needs to be done is going to get done. But there's no rush in it. You know, there's no sense of urgency. Whereas in the U.S., everything is urgent. You know, like, I need it done now, 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 now. And, you know, I had to get used to it. But now that I'm used to it, I honestly don't know if I can ever go back to that, like, I need to get it now, you know, I got to get a high live. I don't think I can go back to that, being that I've had this experience for so long and not just like a vacation, you know, with a vacation, you can easily snap out of the space of life. But when you live here, you know, you be, this basically becomes your new normal, your new reality. So it's kind of like that old reality or the old way of life. It kind of it just doesn't work here or it doesn't exist here. At least not for me. I'm speaking from my own personal experience. But yes, that is reason number one why I love living here in Mexico. All right, reason number two why I love living here in Mexico is the sense of community. And when I say sense of community, for example, I know in the U.S., most people, they have neighbors that they never speak to. Like you walk outside and you don't even see your neighbors or you rarely see them. So it's just like a stranger living next to you. Here in my town, it's not like that. Literally, as soon as I walk outside my door or even when I'm on my balcony, you know, everyone is like, hola, cariño, hola, morenito, hola, whatever name they give me because they give me so many names. Um, but it's just amazing. It's, you know, it's that sense of acknowledgement and like you are part of the community. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's something that I had when I was younger in the U.S. But, you know, the older you get, I feel the more closed off you get to people. Like, there's like a disconnect between people as you get older, especially in the U.S. Um, you know, you just don't acknowledge each other like how you did when you were younger. You know, it's just different. I guess you grow up and you're just like... Yeah, I don't have to say hi to them. You know, I'm busy. I got to work. No, here, people are working, but they also acknowledge you. And, um, like, you know each other's families. And, you, and, like, you know, it's very close. It's not like you're living next to a complete stranger. Um, you actually know these people. And you see their children. You see their spouses. You know, they hang out at the beach with you. Like, you know, just different things. And as you can see in the video on my way here... I was acknowledged by two people um, that I see every single day, like every single day. The first guy, um, he sells like agua de coco or coconut water, agua de tamarindo and different like waters outside of his van uh, about two blocks away from my house and the second guy he works at the bike rental shop um you know they have the electric bikes you can go up in the mountains with the bikes and everything's the e-bikes um and yeah i see them every single day these are people these aren't people who i just put in my video no i see them every single day you know so i really like that and as you can see the uh first guy he called me medianoche which is midnight now i kind of told him that was my name so that was my fault but i kind of like it midnight medianoche it's perfect it's kind of, it sounds like a stripper name kind of <laughs> okay but um yeah so the sense of community it's not you just feel connected i think connected is a good word you feel connected here you know well i feel connected here because like i said this is all from my experience it's just like I walk around town, I go around town, I'm acknowledged by people who I see every day and sometimes strangers. And actually a lot of people, they know me and I don't even know them. And this is how I know because when I'm walking on the Malecon, as you can see, um, I rode my bike today. And if I don't ride my bike, I'm telling you, I'll be stopped by at least 10 people asking, where's your bike? Like, and I'm just like, oh, I left it at home. They was like, oh, okay, because you're always on your bike. Cause, like, I'm always on the bike. Everyone knows I'm the Morenito and La Bicicleta you know so um yeah it's crazy you know the servers who work at the restaurants right there on the malecon they always like hey what's up and you know it's just really really nice and i really like that feeling you know um another example is when i'm out and about let's say i went out partying or something and um let's just say i'm walking like I know a lot of the taxi drivers here, not like personally like, oh, like I know your life story, but like, you know, I see them all the time and they see me all the time. And, um, you know, a few of them have taken me home before. Um, so they already know where I live. They're like, oh yeah, necesitas una monta or like you need, you know, a ride or something. And I'm like, oh, I'm good. Thank you. But they already know where I live. So if something like were to happen and I need to get home urgently, I don't even have to tell them where I live. I'm just like, a la casa. And 
they'll take me right there. You know, a lot of people that would, you know, it probably doesn't seem secure or you seem worried about people knowing where you live. This is a small town, so people are bound to know where you live, you know. Um, but it's nothing like malicious, you know, it's nothing uh, bad about it. Um, so it's just really like, wow, you know. It's kind of, it's like a family. It's like a big family in this town. So I really like that. So yeah, number two, sense of community. Reason number three why I love living here in Mexico is my mental clarity. You guys know that saying, uh, peace of mind, or like there's nothing like having a peace of mind. I know many people have said that, but I really believe few people have experienced it. And I'm saying that because for me, mental clarity is literally just being clear mentally on everything. It doesn't mean that you know exactly like, you know, what to do or like you have this clear cut plan of your life not like that it just means that you're in the present you know you are clear about your current goals and you aren't stressed out about future goals or like finances you know because well me personally i don't have like a lot of money i mean i'm not poor either but you know i don't have like a lot of money what people would consider wealthy and neither do most people that live here but as far as mental clarity you just feel like at peace in a way. It's like, how can I describe mental clarity? It's just like, you see the world differently than most people. You aren't bogged down, if that makes sense. For example, when I go back to the US, you know, to visit family and things like that, which I love visiting family from time to time, but they know that I can't stay there for too long. I just can't. For me, it does something to me mentally. Like, I feel like, I'm like I literally feel myself going down if that makes sense um, and I mean that on like a psychological level and energetic level I just feel like I'm going down and when I come back here it's like my battery is being recharged I'm at full capacity you know so and I feel lighter I'm lighter here I feel physically lighter and mentally lighter when I'm here because like I said I have little worries here um, whereas in the States, you know, you got to work, 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 work. Everything's expensive. You know, you got to worry about how, how you're paying your rent or how you're going to pay your bills, debt, all types of things, you know, and all that stuff, you know, it lowers your frequency. It like lowers your vibe, your entire mood. And no wonder why people, you know, are going crazy, which I don't watch the news or anything. So I honestly don't really know what's happening, but you know, no wonder why people are the way they are for the most part in the U S just that environment is just for me it's it doesn't work for me that's why i can only be there for short periods of time now um and yeah i just for me it's like in and out i'm in there maybe for a week maybe two after that i need to leave i have to because if not i just kind of get weighed down you know so um I've adapted to this and mental clarity is definitely, definitely something that you want. And if you don't have it, you know, I really hope that you find your own path to mental clarity. Um, and yeah, I think I think that's my biggest wish for everyone in the world to find some form of mental clarity. Even if you're in the U.S. or if you're in an environment that it's really hard to you know see it or feel it you know i really think that that is a birthright and everyone should have that experience at least once and maintain it if possible you know do whatever practices spiritual practices religious practices it doesn't matter whatever helps you connect i think is um it's of service or it's you know of use then do it all right reason number four why i love living here in mexico is living simply it is very easy and very doable to live a simple life here in Mexico. And when I say lim I limple, when I say simple, I mean like just, I would say the bare essentials or, you know, as you guys already know, I am a minimalist. Um, and if you are in the U.S., you know, it's, it's not impossible to be a minimalist anywhere. But, you know, it is... It is based off of consumerism, you know, basically how much stuff you can buy, <laughs> you know, how much stuff you can have, you know, the nice, the nicest car, the biggest house, 
uh, you know, I guess the most well-paying job. You know, it's all about that material stuff. And that's fine and dandy. Some people, they love material things and that's completely fine. I'm not pushing against or knocking that at all. I'm just speaking for myself, me personally. Having material stuff, it's fine and dandy. I think it does enhance your experience to a certain extent, but that's not everything for me. You know, uh, for me, that's not my main priority. Um, and I know that may sound crazy, like, what? You don't want to have a, not a well-paying job or you don't want to, you know, like, live well? You can live well and live, and live a simple life at the same time. And, you know, I've proven that to myself uh, just by living here. One thing that makes living in Mexico so simple is that it's cheap you know it's cheap it's not like the US um, when I tell my mom and you know uh, my dad and you know my family members some of the prices like what I pay for things you know sometimes they, they don't believe me like it's too good to be true no it's really not it's so cheap here you know um, and if you are getting paid in US dollars it goes a long way so Living a simple life is definitely doable here, um, and you just don't have to worry about, you know, having the nicest clothes or whatever. Y'all, I barely wear clothes as it is, but, you know, you don't have to worry about all that stuff, like keeping up with the Joneses or, you know, putting on a facade or, you know, just, I guess, trying to flaunt what you have. You don't have, I mean, you can definitely do that here. There are people who are living in Conchas Chinas and like, you know, these different places, you know, um, that are catered, I would say, more towards foreigners such as Canadians and Americans. And, you know, they, they have the house in the hills, basically. And, you know, with the palm trees, the pools, all that. And that is all fine and dandy. You know, you, I think it really depends on what you want and what you're looking for. If that's what you're looking for, do it. You know, don't judge it. I'm not judging you for it. But. But for those who want to live a simple, you know, a simple life or just like a, you know, like you don't need like the newest things or like a lot of things, you know, you're just content with what you have. And, you know, just ex for me, experiences, those are valuable to me, you know, you can because money, it comes and goes, you know, just like your possessions. But experiences, those are something that sticks with you, you know. I feel like it's very valuable. They are more valuable than anything. So, and the experiences I've had here, like I said, no one can take that. No one can take that away from me. Um, so, it's just like the things I've learned here just by, you know, being, I've been humbled here. You know, I'm talking my water, it got cut off because they were doing like, they're still doing construction all over the city and they would like cut the pipes and you know the water went out the electricity went out and you know i'm used to having these things fixed within a matter of hours in the states uh, but no i went like two days <laughs> just like a few weeks ago i went two days without uh water and i had to take a whole bath you know <laughs> I took a whole bath and it was a very humbling experience. Also, I'm thankful for my friends here. They let me take a shower at their place. But yeah, I was like, uh, it was a very humbling experience, but it was actually pretty nice. You know, I showered with rainwater for the first time. Yo, it is refreshing. It really is. Um, I have a little bucket. Ugh, I sound crazy right now, but I have a little bucket. I put it outside in the rain and then I brought it in the shower and I washed out with the bucket and I actually slept really well. I slept really good that night. So, um, you know, just little things like that, that you take for granted, like your water, your, um, your AC, you know, it's just really humbling. So living a simple life here is definitely doable. And if you don't need much, this is your paradise. It really is. It's your paradise. And a little goes a long way here. So finally, that's number reason number five. Four. Now, this one is very personal for me because this reason number five is Mexico literally fulfilled one of my biggest dreams, which was to live abroad. I always wanted to live abroad. I used to say it when I was younger all the time. I'll be watching Disney Channel and all of that stuff. And I always said... I want to live in another country like I want to have that experience you know I want to hear a different language I just want to be in a different environment and I always said that 
I was going to live abroad when when I got older. I didn't know how. I didn't know where the money was coming from. I didn't even know how I was going to do it. But all I knew was that I wanted to live in a foreign country and I did it. You know, that's why I say that this place has fulfilled one of my biggest dreams, which was to live in a foreign country. And I've been doing it for three years now. And from this dream, another dream has been born, um, which is, I'm going to let you guys just know this one. I have many other dreams, but this is one that's related to this, which is living in a foreign country. Now, I actually have a desire to live in a country where I don't speak the language. Well, I don't speak the language. It's a different culture. Um, yeah, that's my that's a new desire I have. I want to go to a country where I just don't know anything, you know. So it's kind of like a challenge for me in a way. It'll I, for me, it's exciting. I know that sounds scary to people. Like, what? You don't know what's going on? It's dangerous. No, I'm. I don't think that way. For me, it's like it's exciting. And I personally think you get more out of life that way because if you already know everything or you think you know everything, you're not learning anything, you know? So I love learning from other people. I love seeing different experiences and also talking to my students, you know, from all over the world. That really just like adds to adds to the dream or to this desire to live in a different country where I don't know the language. Um just because I feel like there's a lot of value and a lot of benefit that comes from that, you know? And that's something that I can look back on and I can say, yo, I lived in this country and I didn't know what the hell was going on. Or like, you know, I had to find a way to survive in this country. I had to find a way to make a life in this country. You know, for me, I want to do it for a year at least. One year in some country. I don't know which country just yet. But um, I'm definitely going to make it happen. Well, I don't have to make it happen. It's already done. You know, um, I'm just waiting for the timelines to sync up, basically. But, um, yeah, I'm excited for that. So that this dream has awakened a new dream in me. And I know once I have that experience, it's going to... Awaken another, you know, so it's just like it's never ending. So that's why I'm not really rushing things anymore because I've come to realize that as soon as you fulfill one thing or one thing that you think that you really want that's going to make you super happy, you're you are going to be happy with it, but it's going to cause you to want something else and it's going to cause you and that's going to you know cause you to want something else it's just like a launching pad or a launching platform for something else because that's why we're here we're always evolving so you're never going to get it done if that makes sense i know some people are like what there has to be an end goal there is no end goal it's never ending you know as soon as you fulfill one dream or one goal where you are from that viewpoint or that vantage point it's going to cause you to want something else that's why i guess when people say how rich people they just want more money or they want to find new ways to make money yeah because they wanted that money for so long they got it and now that they're in a different you can say paradigm or a different world that being that they have the money it causes them to want to expand and see wow okay i made money this way how can i make even more money in different ways so i guess that's that's what you call greed um, I would just call it expansion at this point. I used to think of it as greedy, but now that I've had a big dream of mine fulfilled, I understand it's not really greed. It's you. It's evolution, really. Um, and how you interpret that, that's all up to you and where you are in life and on your journey. So there's really no right and wrong in this. You just got to figure it out. But yeah, Mexico definitely fulfilled one of my biggest dreams and I am forever grateful and I'm super happy about this place and I'm excited for what's coming next. So yeah, those are the five reasons why I love living in Mexico. Obviously, there are many more reasons, but I wanted to limit it to five and um, I'm excited for what's coming. I have some more videos coming very soon and yeah, stay tuned and thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And yeah, I will see you in the next video. Bye.